Greetings! Have you ever wanted to separate the audio from one application and from a different one so that you have two audio streams that you can adjust the volume individually for so that the viewers can have the audio lower or higher depending on their need during a stream without it affecting the audio that you hear? Well, in this video I'm going to show you how to accomplish that with Pulse Audio. Okay, so now that we're in uh, our operating system and on the desktop, I am using PopOS for this demonstration. It is Ubuntu-based and it's what most new people will be running from my experience. So, first thing first, you need to open the terminal and uh, we will need to um, create a folder. We want to make a folder in our home directory called .pulse. So we need to we need to make this folder. Then we want to copy the systems pulse audio config into this folder so that if we mess anything up, we can just delete this one file and our audio will be working again. So we want to copy etc pulse default.pa into our dot pulse folder in our home directory. What we also need to do is that we need to note down what our audio device is called. With that we have this nice command here which I will post in the description below along with uh, the config template that I that I have. So I'll go through this command with you. PACMD is a Pulse Audio command, like that's what it stands for. And we want to list all the syncs, which are all our speakers or outputs. And I am then grabbing, or I'm grabbing the line that starts with index, or well, contains index, and the line that uh, contains name, followed by a semicolon, I mean a colon. And this will give us an output of all our uh, all our outputs. For me, in this virtual machine, this is just one. But the star here indicates which one is the one that you're currently using. And that means that I want to grab this name here. So I'm going to copy that and write that into a document here so that I have it because I will need it later. So now, I want to edit the default.pa inside my .pulse folder. In order to that I will be using nano because it is easier to explain nano to a beginner. So nano.pulse default.pa. We want to go all the way to the bottom of this and uh, I have a template here ready for use. This is my template for game audio. And I'll go through what each line does. So the first line, we start with load module, which will load a module. And the module, the module we want to load is the module null sync, which is a dummy microphone and speaker and we want to give it a name called game audio this can be whatever you want i have gone with game audio because it's my game audio then we want to update the sync which is the output we want to update the properties for that and we want to update the properties for the game audio sync and we want to change the description of it to game audio. If you don't do this, the description will be null, as in the actual word null. And uh, you will end up with several speakers and several, uh, or several outputs and several microphones called null. And it will be a nightmare to try and actually root everything in the future. So we will do the same for the source property list. This is the microphone, 
which is gameaudio.monitor. I want to change the description to monitor of game audio. Simple. Now the last line, this actually puts and puts it into Pulse Audio. You load the module, and we call it lo uh, module loopback because that's what the module we're using is. We want to use the source game audio dot monitor so that we want the game audio to be recorded, and we want the output to be our to be our headset, the actual headset that we're using, or the actual speakers that we are using. So for this, we need to get the value we found earlier, this one, because this is why virtual machines actual speakers. And we will paste that in there, and we will add latency underscore msec equals one, because this will set the delay or latency for this audio sync to one millisecond. I don't think you can have it lower than that. I haven't actually tried, because I think zero will make it to use the default 200 milliseconds. So with this, you get a pretty, pretty synced up audio. And uh, once this is done, you can kill Paul's audio, but for this demonstration, I will actually need to create two more. So with the magic of uh, video editing, I'm done. The important things to actually keep in mind when you add more syncs is the source and the sync names have to be different for every device you add. If you have the same on two devices, you get either double audio or what you will get is an infinite audio loop. Both are absolutely horrible. So once you have actually made sure that everything here is correct, where every line for every device has sync name that is matching the rest of the sync name dot monitor and sync name and source equals sync name dot monitor. Then you can press Control X, press Y, and then press Enter to save the file. Now, to continue this, we need to install a program called Pulse Audio Volume Control, or PAVU Control. It exists for both KDE and GTK, and since this is a GTK desktop, I am going to install the GTK version. So. If you're on KDE Plasma or LXQT, you can install Pavu Control QT. Already have it installed because I have done several cuts on this video. Now, what we want to do is uh, open Pavu Control. And uh, we do not have the devices here. Well, I already have them here because I loaded the configuration earlier, but by default, you will not already have them here. So go back to your terminal and run pulse audio dash dash kill. This will, autom uh, will, this will automatically restart pulse audio for you. But if uh, pulse audio volume control says establishing connection, to Pulse Audio server or something similar for, let's say, more than three seconds. Go back to your terminal and run Pulse Audio dash dash start, and that will start the Pulse Audio server. Uh, any application that we're currently using the outputs, like playing audio and stuff like that, will stop working. You need to close them completely and open them again. Just keep that in mind. Now that we have the Pulse Audio Control, uh, Pulse Audio Server restarted, what we will do now is that we will verify that our 
the loopback devices are here, and they are. We have game audio, vo voice audio, and we have another one on voice audio. Did I... I forgot to uh, change the name on that one, I think. At least they're different syncs, so that works. So, on uh, recording, we will have to verify the same thing. But uh, again, we have two of them called monitor for voice audio. But they're, they're separate devices. I did this earlier, where I forgot to change the name. But they're separate syncs, unlike last time. So once we verify that all of them are here, we will switch to show on the applications again, because we do not need to mess with these. Now we will need an application to actually play some audio. With this, we can uh, open up Firefox for our demonstration and go to, well, we can use my video here and just go somewhere inside it. Yeah, that will work. So here, if we actually look at the hair, and throw. This is already using other audio from my clip earlier. But if I change this to voice audio, it will switch channel. I, I should also get this guy out of the way. And to game audio before he causes trouble. So let's say Firefox is a game running now that we want to actually stream. And up and away. Now, up, up go away. into OBS. Oh boy, he is on top of that. And uh, it says game audio here, but it's actually using the wrong uh, wrong device. If you go into File, Settings, and then go down to Audio, we want to switch Desktop Audio to use Game Audio, and Desktop Audio 2 to use Voice Audio. What this will do is that it will tell OBS to capture these two channels by themselves, and not the final product yeah, being played to your headset. So if you look here, we have voice audio, where there is nothing, and we have uh, game audio. And you can adjust this game audio... Captain would be a bit worse. ...separately... ...from the voice audio. And I can t show you that you can actually... That uh, you can actually move this over to voice audio because you can actually set it over to voice audio. And then you can adjust this separately. Ow. And as you can see, our final audio here does not get adjusted with OBS. So the audio stays the same for me, but for the viewer, it will be lower or higher depending on what I adjust it to. Now, what if I want to set this to other audio? What if I have another channel I want to adjust it on? Where did well, he fly? There is no other audio here, and we only had two devices on OBS that we could actually add. What we can do then is that we can go into sources. And then we can go to audio output capture and call this for other audio and we want to set this to other audio we now have the other audio channel here too so we can add more channels oh god another one really oh boy Okay, so I know this solution is not the best, and it's not the easiest, and it might be a bit too complicated for some people, but it is the simplest that I know about, and it accomplishes what most people want from this. Obviously, I'm not going to get into how to set up Jack, because Jack is a complicated sound system, way more advanced than uh, Pulse Audio, and it's, it just doesn't work for new users, and it's also beyond the scope of this video. 
So I hope you have enjoyed the video, and I will see you all later. Have a nice day.